Hey guys, Dungeon J here. Today I'm going to go ahead and give a review of a good old fashioned beat em up with some new modern features Fight and Rage. Now, this is where mutants have risen up to kick the crap out of the human race, and it's up to a ragtag group of heroes to save the future of mankind. In addition to that, the game released back in September 19th of 2017. It met with mostly very positive reviews and it sits at a price point of about $20 on Steam. So we're just going to go ahead and dive in, and remember if you like this style of content to give a thumbs up and subscribe, it really helps out. So, where to begin? Fine Rage is a throwback, one of those nostalgia trips down memory lane complete with a Hagar look-alike named Ricardo, a guy like Ninja named F. Norris, and a female ninja aptly named Gal. It offers a wide array of different modes including a versus, but the storyline with co-op is where it truly shines. It has a unique take on the side-scrolling beat-em-up of the days gone, and that's that the storyline actually branches. There are decisions to be made in the course of the playthrough and multiple different paths for a climatic ending. I really enjoyed it, and I really enjoyed the co-op elements as well. One of the things that you can do is a combo off of each other, so you can really get those ample opportunities to just literally smash the crap out of the AI and have them juggling back and forth. It's really fun. And this also includes the boss fights. Once you actually start landing them and figuring out the nuances for the bosses, they become really fun encounters. As for the different characters, Ricardo actually can power through damage and not get knocked back, which is a really awesome feature for the slugger in you. In my co-op journeys, I always found that if you have someone that's a little less knowledgeable on what to do, just let them pick Ricardo. His clothesline, spinning attack, and the way he brushes off attacks makes it really easy for a beginner. My personal favorite is F. Norris. It's obviously a spinoff of Chuck Norris. He had a decent melee attack, and also you could pull off a juggle move to keep the combo going on many of the enemy types. His power move is a toss-up. It's either a fast melee puncher or it's just a devastating one-time hitter. Either way, the versatility and surprising range for F. Norris makes him my selection. Gal is an interesting one. You have to be a little more evasive with her. Her combos aren't as long and her power-up is very self-contained, but playing her strategically will make a serious impact on the gameplay and she's a lot of fun and very fast. She can kite bosses and move away from deadly AI very easily, just all to come up behind them and smack the living crap out of them. Either way, she is good, but her range is limiting and you need to think about that. As for the modes, like I said, there is an interesting versus mode where you square off in a cage to duke it out. Also, as you complete the storyline segments or milestones, you can unlock different skins and characters to play with. I tested several of them out in the versus mode and it was a lot of fun. While the move sets don't seem to be as complete as the regular characters, they do have unique signature moves and it definitely gives a little bit more flavor to the game. You're also given a wide option of visual settings. You can go down the CRT road if you want or enjoy the art style in all its modern majesty. Performance wise, the game runs buttery smooth. In the three times we completed the storyline arc, I never saw a major bug, but there was a very occasional animation glitch or flicker. And with so much going on on the screen, you'd really have to be looking for it to happen to notice it. But that's what I do. That's what reviewers do. We look for it, and so it, it does exist. Overall, performance and gameplay wise, Fight and Rage does a really great job. Now, as far as the storyline goes, it's really pretty simplistic. You got to save the world from the big bad evil mutants, which is interesting considering one of the people helping you as Ricardo, a mutant himself, and this is presented in the storyline, which was well put together from a narrative standpoint. Now a little heads up here, it's a little more brutal than your normal size scroller from yesteryear, complete with human corpses, people dying in front of you, for, uh, being sacrificed, and even some strong hints at cannibalism. I tell you this because in the co-op I played, I played it with my little kids, and I was a little shocked in the take on some of the narrative. If you're planning on purchasing this as a family game, you might want to be aware of the sensitive content. Now, barring all that, the interchangeable narrative gives the game tremendous replay value and a lot of bang for your buck. Sound and music design. It's really a mixed bag here. I absolutely enjoyed it. The sounds are really good. Uh, the track's upbeat, it fits. Now, I think they did an awesome job here. The music, again, is simply awesome. Some of those riffs are really fiery and get you going, and I couldn't help but get in the mood of punching things, and it was really impressive. 
As you guys know, I look at the entire package when reviewing with a major focus on cost, replayability, and that fun factor. Fine Rage is a must play. A lot of titles try for this, and I've always seen them a mark or two off, but Fight and Rage really pushes the envelope a little in the beat 'em up genre. And I've got to say that I really enjoyed it, but mostly I recommend this as a co-op for you and your friends. The game is an easy game to get into and chill and hang out with and not get in the way of having some fun. Remember, if you like this style of content, to give a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps out. This is Dungeon J signing out. Have a great day gaming. Later. Just walking the line and there's nobody with me